Now we move to the second speaker, Rachel Ortega Arguiles, and uh, she will we, we we change a little bit the of course the the the, the subject and. Uh, uh, this is uh, on, uh, I moved it, so now I forgot. So uh, 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 Rachel will tell us on uh, the title. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you very much. So let me share my screen. Okay. Um, First of all, thank you very much for the invitation uh, to present my work uh, today here to all of you. And welcome everyone, um, wherever you are, uh, at your office, at your home. Uh, um, good morning, everyone. So today, why, what I want to present is something I have been uh, thinking about in the last uh, days and weeks. And um, for doing that, uh, I'm going to focus well, I, the first, uh, the title of my presentation is on today's regional development challenges, uh, growth, inclusion, and sustainability, uh, COVID-19 reflections. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to divide my presentation in four main blocks. Um, what I'm going to look at is at the relationship between these uh, blocks, economic growth and leveling up or rebalancing of the economy, sustainability and inclusivity, with the evidence that we have at this moment that is uh, on COVID that um, can be found at the Eurostat, that is uh, the recent release in August of the Eurostat of the weekly average deaths in 2020. Finally, after considering these relationships, I'm going to look at the role that eventually the quality of governance and the devolution of institutional structure uh, might have had in influencing these relationships. Um, more or less with the idea that uh, the more devolved nations uh, that may eventually have implemented more place-based or sensitive or place-sensitive uh, approaches that are better suited to deal with the pandemic in a more uh, local level. So the introduction, um, it will be more or less say that um, the impact of the current uh, COVID-19 crisis along with the uh, will be vast uh, as, as well as especially uneven. And I'm just uh, calling also uh, some of you if you are interested on, on the uh, on this especially uneven effect of the of the COVID to uh, to read the last editorial of regional studies that we have put together on COVID. Uh, that I think that it really illustrates uh, these uh, disparities in uh, the effect of the virus. Um, geographically, uh, sometimes this uh, variation has been uh, uh, even greater um, within countries than between them. So if we think about in Europe, a small fraction of about 500 NATS three regions account uh, for, the, for a majority of COVID-19 deaths. Um, in Italy, we know that uh, uh, the number of fatalities in Lombard, in Lombardy has been much higher than in any other region, reaching almost 50% of the national total cases affecting just 16% of the population. In the US, we have the New York and the New Jersey cases, uh, 2,000 deaths per uh, 100,000 inhabitants in comparison with sick, sick deaths in, in the case of Hawaii. And in Latin America in July, um, it was the global center of the pandemic and we had this uh, big uh, excess uh, death rates uh, in, in regions such as in Ecuador, Brazil or Peru uh, exceeding uh, the 200%. And so we see the big um, heterogeneity, regional heterogeneity of the effect of this pandemic. Um, Governments and institutions have had an extremely important role in explaining how nations and regions have suffered and handled the pandemic. And uh, here I'm arguing two main, thing, two main things. One, uh, nations and regions that have more balanced structure in terms of growth, inclusion and sustainability have been in a better position with, to deal with the pandemic. And second, the pollution and quality of governance might have had an influence in reducing the negative effect of the pandemic. Uh, I base these uh, arguments in uh, in three main points. Um, first, um, 
taking a systemic approach to regional development and resilience and um, a link uh, with the penalty and bottlenecks way of reasoning. Second, um, regions and, and countries uh, with higher devolution uh, seem to be in a better position to deal with the pandemic as they can implement closer place-based and place-sensitive measures. And finally, uh, there is a, a recent evidence that a mix and balanced public expenditure basket um, seem to support more higher uh, economic cohesion, regional and national growth and resilience. So, as I say, uh, first, the systemic approaches to regional development and the penalty of water simply, simply implies that a system is only as strong as it weakest links. So we have uh, the illustration that we implemented by using the Regional Entrepreneurship and Development Index for the context of entrepreneurial ecosystems. Uh, but in a similar way of thinking of that um, um, way of looking that uh, those uh, uh, nations and those regions that seem to be um, uh, a weaker um, uh, um, great or, or, of um, of the indicator, uh, they were the ones that they have a more um, unequal, uh, unequal um, uh, distribution of the different pillars in that indicator. So a similar way of thinking can be uh, very variable in understanding the systemic shocks associated with COVID-19 and the likely long-term implications in terms of development trajectories and policy challenges. The second point is around governance systems and the quality uh, the quality of governance and the structure of governance might play a key role in our responses to the systemic shocks. The uh, third point that is uh, related with this, um, uh, trying to have a more uh, balanced uh, uh, strategy, uh, a more um, top-down with bottom-up approaches is coming from a, a, a recent, recent literature that uh, is trying to analyze the effectiveness of cohesion policy and has tried to look at uh, the composition of uh, the expenditures and also the public uh, funds in trying to explain how uh, economic cohesion and growth has evolved and also has been developed. So uh, we see things such as looking at not only economic but also socioeconomic lead, uh, needs in spending priorities and also thinking about uh, the double side of the potential concentration of expenditures in a, a small number of thematic areas. So first I'm going to look at uh, leveling up and how um, uh, rebalancing, uh, um, so leveling up uh, for, for the ones in the UK is quite uh, familiar, so it's tackling interregional inequality it might have had an effect in, um, uh, uh, it might be an association with uh, the deaths of COVID. I will uh, start by uh, looking at um, the uh, long run evolution of interregional inequality, and we have seen that interregional inequality in Western Europe uh, has been uh, higher in the early decades of the 20th century uh, when cross country productivity variations were also much more significant. Uh, during the second half of the century, interregional variations fell um, mark markedly uh, across Europe. And you see that at the end of the century, uh, you have uh, interesting cases such as uh, the case of Germany that after the reunification show shows drops in their inequality and the case of the UK that uh, it shows an increase in the regional inequality in, in recent uh, decades. As you see here, these are the two examples I was uh, posing. Uh, you see, like from the tw uh, the two thousands, you can see uh, the big uh, disparities in the evolution of uh, interregional inequality in Europe. Um, when we look at the uh, urban uh, group of um, at the urban uh, um, uh, regions. Um, we can see that uh, looking at uh, urban inequality, it, it might be important, but it, sometimes it does not tell uh, us the whole story because uh, between a quarter and a half of our populations in Europe do not live in large cities. So we have to consider um, uh, that the evolution of these uh, uh, um, uh, disparities, for instance, in here is the illustration of the case of Spain in, in the in the in an historical period. Uh, we have seen how uh, looking not only at the urban and rural uh, might be hiding also very important uh, parts of what is happening in the uh, non-urban uh, uh, kind of regions. Here uh, we see that. Uh, rural regions close to cities seem to be growing faster than uh, even intermediate regions. 
So uh, for looking at interregional differences, we can also look at different um, uh, um, how they somehow uh, score differently. So we have here um, from the OECD uh, using the regional well-being index and looking at the different pillars of the index, we can somehow look at how uh, uneven uh, there are some uh, regions uh, in terms of the interregional disparity. So we see here the, the more balanced case of Germany compared to the more uneven case of Spain and Italy um, in terms of uh, jobs uh, um, in compare um, um, the rate of employment uh, versus the rate of unemployment. And here uh, comparing uh, the housing as a, a, a number of rooms uh, 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 person, so you can see also the the, the kind of uh, interregional uh, heterogeneity in uh, in in all the countries. But here we have to think that housing here is not only a reflection of the disposable income. Um, see, for instance, uh, London or Northern Ireland in comparison with Northern Ireland, but also the accessibility to land and population density. Um, Recent evidence uh, that um, we have shown, uh, it shows uh, uh, that there is no such a uh, very strong link between economic growth and interregional inequality, because um, when we focus in particular in Western Europe, uh, in the case of um, the right uh, uh, figure, you can see that including trans, uh, the former transitions economies, you see that there is a more um, a, a kind of relationship between um, uh, growth and interregional inequality. And therefore, what I'm saying is that we have to also be careful on what I was talking about, urban versus rural, or urban versus a more uh, um, uh, granularity in the non-urban uh, areas, that in the case of former transition regions, the urban uh, uh, areas have had a very, very important role in increasing growth. So what I wanted uh, to share uh, you is that if we somehow look at the relationship between regional inequality as measured either with the tail index that considers between and within uh, um, uh, interregional inequality and the Gini index that on only considers uh, uh, interregional inequality, we can see that there is a, a slight uh, relationship. As higher is the uh, regional inequality, as higher is the annual average uh, uh, debt uh, per uh, thousand population uh, in uh, 2020. Uh, you can see in the left uh, figure, I have uh, not included in the in the in the orange line uh, the UK because the UK is that dot that you can see here. So it's a kind of outlier in terms of the tail index. When looking at sustainability, again, uh, sustainability, for instance, here I'm, I'm, I'm looking uh, again with the regional well-being index uh, at the comparison between life satisfaction, how do they consider life satisfaction and uh, environment. And, uh, and here you can see uh, how, um, again, uh, there is a big disparities on the interregional uh, aspects of sustainability in countries such as Spain and Italy, and it compares uh, in, co in co contrast a bit with other countries like Germany and the United Kingdom. In order to uh, compare um, the effects of or the negative effects of uh, COVID, uh, COVID um, and uh, sustainability, I'm using here um, the web tool of the uh, OECD measuring the distance to the SDGs in regions and cities. Here you can see that the web tool uh, allows you to look at the interregional variation in reaching the um, sustainable development goals. Um, uh, so you can compare here Madrid is in blue and the national average is in yellow and then there are different regions that are having comparing so you can see how um, close uh, how far away are um, uh, these uh, regions and also compare them um, between so the SDG um, uh, index allows you to have a national um, uh, value for the index and then you can see here that greater international uh, interregional inequality uh, in terms of SDG associated with a, a slower progress towards sustainable development goals. And um, so we see that as higher they are the sustainable development goals um, uh, targets reach, as uh, lower is the interregional inequality. And uh, when we compare with the uh, COVID-19 deaths, we can also see how as higher is the uh, local sustainable development goals targets reach as lower is the average weekly uh, deaths uh, rates in 2020. 
the third part I wanted to show, show you is uh, when we are looking at inclusivity. Of course, uh, we have already with the tail uh, considered a bit uh, the part of inclusivity because the tail in the regional uh, inequality index uh, also uh, considers that within um, regional inequality. But here, uh, again, going back to the regional well-being, you can also see the comparison between areas such as uh, connected with the community, how uh, the people feel that they are connected with the community, or the civic engagement that is the turn uh, now to in, in, in voters. So from the German and UK, more balanced cases today, and even cases of Spain. So again, this might have an effect in explaining um, how uh, the regions are prepared to handle uh, shocks such as COVID. Um, here I have uh, used the accessibility to services uh, in order that our measure as the household uh, uh, access to broadband also to show how uh, maybe inclusive or, uh, uh, it, it can be to access to this ICT and how prepared might be uh, the society in order uh, to, uh, to handle this situation. So you can see that in the UK you have a, a northern um, southern divide in, 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 in in the provision of infrastructures in terms of broadband. So you can see interregional inequality as measured as the uh, within a uh, regional uh, Gini index. And I have to thank uh, Paolo Veleri from OECD to help me with uh, some of these indicators. And also the intra-regional uh, inequality um, uh, with a between uh, top 90% uh, and bottom 10% of income. And you can see how uh, the regional weekly average debt, so here we are using uh, regional data, not the national one, um, uh, shows uh, as, as, um, as there is an increase of interregional inequality, we have uh, also an increase of the regional uh, weekly average debts. And uh, here is, um, um, by looking at uh, the population. So um, so looking at uh, the population, you see that maybe this positive effect of uh, intra-regional um, inequality, it, it cannot really be seen uh, as much. Um, but now, when we look at the role of governance, and uh, we take into consideration as well how uh, the quality of governance and the institutional structure might have uh, influenced uh, the relationships between um, tackling interregional inequality, tackling sustainability, or tackling inclusivity um, in uh, trying to deal with. Uh, um, COVID, we can see that um, actually by looking or using the uh, quality of governance index at the national level, we can see that uh, as higher is the quality of regional index here at the left side of your screen, as a lower seem to be the weekly average um, uh, national debt per th thousand inhabitants. And we can also see it by looking at uh, the local autonomy index, the local autonomy index is m m trying to measure uh, how much autonomy the local government bodies have. So you can see how uh, also as higher is the local autonomy index in the country, as uh, lower is the weekly average national debt per population. And you can see the comparison by looking at only the quality of governance uh, here and by including also the devolution there. So it's not only how good is your government, but also how uh, has this possibility to handle a more local level uh, this uh, type of shocks. Also, uh, we can, uh, looking at the local autonomy index, uh, one of the pillars is taxing power of subnational, uh, subcentral government. And we can see also, um, even if it is not as strong, because this is the whole indicator and this is only one pillar, how um, uh, the taxing power, if you have taxing power, is important, but also uh, this uh, should be uh, or is a strength when the higher is the local taxation power, um, the lower is the number of debts, and this negative association is stronger when the quality of governance is also taken into account. At the regional level, of course, we can also, uh, so the national level, what it happen is, is, high, is heavily influenced, of course, by uh, maybe one point in the, in the sample. Uh, when we take uh, uh, the regional level, we can also compute this uh, regional weekly average debts in 2020 um, at the regional level. And we can, uh, of course, uh, look at uh, the indicators such as the quality of governance index at the regional level as well. And we can see how uh, there is uh, 
re the negative relationship between the quality, uh, so as high as the quality of governance, as lower is the regional weekly average debts, and as higher is the um, is the uh, regional govern uh, quality of governance, as higher is the average weekly regional debt per thousand population. We can also uh, uh, add as well uh, the role of uh, devolution by this local autonomy index, and we can see again as well that uh, this uh, compound, if you want indicator that takes into consideration the quality of governance and also the level of autonomy, it also has a negative relationship between the both. So it's a bit, uh, if you can see here, with quality of governance, you have here this uh, orange line when, when you also uh, include uh, the information of the local autonomy index, but this local autonomy index is at the national level. So uh, quality of governance here is regional, local autonomy index is at the national level, and you can see how it makes uh, uh, the relationship even stronger. Here we have, um, in the case of sustainability, uh, when we take into consideration only sustainability, we have that negative relationship. Um, and when we consider also the quality of governance and uh, how uh, these uh, regions have been able to reach the uh, uh, sustainable development goals, uh, we see how uh, the uh, uh, relationship is uh, negative relationship is stronger. And finally, when we include revolution, we can see how it even is much uh, is, is even uh, stronger. So uh, we will see that uh, the um, quality of governance makes uh, um, um, the national weekly debts uh, um, uh, to decrease as high as the quality of governance when. Um, uh, when um, as higher is the sustainability index, um, uh, the national uh, weekly uh, debt uh, decrease. Uh, when we in include the quality of governance, is even decrease faster. And when we include evolution, is even increase uh, decreases faster. In the case of inclusion, um, well, we have here that. Um, the intra-regional intra inequality um, measure as uh, um, the uh, comparison between the 90 and the 10th uh, income um, uh, groups. You see here that when we include, um, uh, this is uh, the negative relationship, when we include include um, the quality of governance, the relationship seems to be quite flat. But when, when we include devolution, uh, you can see a better uh, uh, negative relationship between uh, intra-regional inequality and the average uh, regional weekly deaths per, per thousand population. So uh, my conclusions, um, I, I might have been a bit quick because I was very concerned about um, being um, uh, out of time. So my conclusions are connected with Taking the example of COVID, um, the quality of governance and the structure of governance, centralization versus decentralization, are related to our ability to respond to systemic shocks. And I have measured here systemic shocks as uh, the average uh, of um, deaths uh, that um, we have seen. Um, I have to say that the Eurostat has put together these uh, debts. Uh, I have used the totals, but also um, the, you have information of uh, the, the, the disparities between female and male. So you can also tackle, um, we were uh, saying in, in the comments of the previous speakers that they were talking about uh, the different comparisons between uh, female and male or between different ages. So um, this uh, analysis could be reproduced by looking at the comparison between male and female. And um, so um, thinking that uh, if you have had um, a lower average uh, weekly debt, uh, in principle, you have somehow been able to react quickly than um, uh, in other cases you have. Second point, higher regional inequality appears to be a barrier to comprehensive responses as are poor quality of governance and lower levels of local autonomy. And finally, in many countries, higher interregional inequality is not associated with growth, nor it, is it associated with higher resilience of systemic shocks. What I would like to go um, and to do forward, because you know, as I mentioned at the very beginning of my talk, this uh, data has only been released um, this month, um, and uh, and some of 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 the weekly um, um, deaths are based on estimations and uh, and, um, and predictions. Um, 
can also vary in terms of um, uh, different countries and different regions. Uh, therefore, what I would like to do is uh, uh, improving the country and the regional samples and indicators, as you can have seen in, in some of the associations I have been using national uh, data, in some of others I have been using regional data. So I would like to uh, try to improve um, these uh, country and regional samples and indicators. Also, I would like to look at uh, not only the average of the weekly deaths, but also the dispersion. Um, so um, I would like to create some dispersion indicators of weekly deaths rates instead of average, because um, they might uh, somehow show the proxy uh, of the speed of policy responses. So if you have um, a very short dispersion, then it shows that they, uh, the governments they act much quicker, uh, quickly, and maybe uh, the evolution might have a more um, uh, thing to say in that uh, uh, fast reaction. Interregional variations of that rates also um, we we have uh, the potential problem by using only the average uh, uh, rates at, at the national level is that. Um, within uh, you have uh, uh, interregional variations uh, within the countries and therefore uh, you have situations where they have a balanced number of rates in uh, all the regions that uh, gives the same somehow uh, uh, value as uh, a, a country that has uh, an asymmetric kind of uh, death rates where you some uh, like in Italy when Lombardy has uh, somehow uh, um, uh, absorbed uh, many of, uh, of the deaths in, in that uh, pro pro um, country. And finally, I would like to look at not only, let's say, the negative effect of COVID that is the deaths, but also look at um, some positive signs uh, in the COVID pandemic that is looking at consumption rates and production rates. Uh, I had um, um, the release um, by Eurostat of the um, construction production uh, rates in the last uh, months, but um, um, the country composition um, and the country composition of uh, the deaths, uh, they were not uh, overlapping very much, so I have very, very few points. Um, Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Rachel, for this very, very interesting uh, talk, uh, giving some first data. Uh, we need data on this story. Uh, uh, nice, uh, also the, the, the talk by Hans with a lot of uh, forward thinking, but we, we need to know what is happening and the establish some cause effect relationships and so on. I abuse of my position to uh, start with some uh, uh, questions because I was really uh, angry to, to, to ask you these two aspects. Um, first of all, I missed a little bit and I would like you to, to, to speak about the real, let's say the cause re uh, effect um, relationship between, for example, uh, sustainable development goals and the death of people of COVID. Why should, let's say, uh, uh, regions where sustainable development goals are more developed uh, or are, are closer to be achieved uh, could have a lower death uh, of COVID? If this is because these regions are more developed, are more, let's say, richer, are more, then the second question comes, which is how much of your results really depend on the correlation you showed us or whether there are, uh, sp these are spurious uh, correlation because regions uh, or countries that are richer and have a stronger health system uh, or had before the crisis a stronger health system were more let's say prepared to uh, handle the shock and therefore they had uh, less uh, uh, death in the COVID. So the questions are related. Uh, first of all, how much, uh, what, which are the reasons behind your correlation, the conceptual uh, reasons behind your correlations and the second is how much these are let's say uh, spuriously uh, related with other uh, situations with other um, uh, structural situations of the regions then i will go back with other questions thank you Rachel. 
Yeah, thank you very much for the question. It's a very good question. Um, well, my reason in it was uh, behind the fact of um, those uh, countries or regions that seem to be a more balanced, uh, let's say, um, kind of um, uh, preparedness um, um, to certain, um, let's say, um, current policy focus that are uh, inclusivity, sustainability, uh, um, economic growth and prosperity, of course, um, they might eventually be in a better way of uh, somehow handling um, this uh, situation, right? And those countries that they show uh, very much internal dis uh, disparities, you know, so uh, the ones that they show higher uh, interregional uh, inequality in many different points, um, they might eventually be less prepared because, you know, maybe this is a sign, uh, a sign of uh, poor quality of governance or maybe this is a sign of uh, that in those uh, kind of uh, systems there is something that is not really functioning properly and this is why i was linking it with a penalty of, of bottlenecks kind of um, uh, way of thinking so um it is true that uh, when we are looking at the sustainable development goals uh, by looking um, at uh, in particular uh, the indicator um, provided by the oecd we need to think about that all the oecd um, countries and regions are included in that analysis and uh, therefore uh, it is a comparison uh, within those countries and within those regions and um, by uh, looking at this indicator for the cases uh, of the uk and the cases of spain because of uh, different uh, activities uh, of research i have been doing i realized that uh, in many cases uh, you cannot see a, a, a very high variation because in those countries because as you say very well they are developed um, they 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 are of course outstanding in the indicator in comparison with other oecd countries that have been included um, but it is uh, so um, I, I try uh, by looking at um, the well-being indicator you have different pillars and then you have different pillars that might eventually also hint um, uh, some uh, points on sustainability um, or inclusivity as well uh, so you have the housing as I was showing or you have the jobs and, and you see that in the ones of uh, environment and things like that you can see uh, still that relationship so um, taking uh, apart that uh, um, the use of that particular indicator the, the the targets to the sustainable development goals um, uh, you can see that uh, still the sustainability or trying to uh, somehow um, um, uh, put together um, um, this kind of uh, uh, um, let's say um, development strategy that also takes into consideration not only economic growth but also other aspects such as sustainability seem to have an effect in reducing those debts. So partly I agree with you that they might show somehow that they are a bit richer but on the other hand I also uh, check other indicators and seem to also hold somehow. Um, unmute. Do you hear me? Yeah, sorry. We move to other questions. The one is uh, you have spoken about interregional inequality. What about intra cities inequality? So, uh, in sense that uh, you show the suggestive evidence that the less unequal regions are had lower debt. Is it the case also for cities? Do we have any evidence? I think that depends on data. Don't it doesn't. Do. Well. Uh yeah, uh, I mean, the good news is that um, uh, Eurostat also uh, provides information at the city level for uh, some cities. So um, so uh, I can see the comment is by David Castells, and of course, it's a bit biased towards the urban uh, <laughs> spectrum, you know. Uh, so, uh, so yes, uh, I mean, that can be done. And I think that um, by looking recently at, uh, at, at the path of uh, uh, interregional and in, uh, interregional inequality in, in the paper that we had um, in the uh, National Institute uh, uh, for Economic Research, um, uh, we see, and also the paper that is coming up in Funcas on, on the Spanish case, that um, it is very interesting to look at uh, the urban level. So you can see huge uh, variation, and of course, uh, um, uh, many people live in, in, in urban areas, right? In particular, if you take also the functional uh, uh, urban areas by the OECD, that also take into consideration the interlands. Um, 
But um, as I always say, and uh, um, I think that uh, by looking only at uh, cities, we are somehow uh, leaving aside uh, part of the story, and and you can see very much in Europe and also in uh, in the case of. Uh, um, Mediterranean countries, how you have this very big divide and also uh, uh, northern urban areas are also explaining uh, very much uh, the patterns of growth and development and resilience as well. Uh, okay, thank you, Rachel. Um, the, another question is by Evelyn. It's, a, it's not a question, it's a, it's a comment. Uh, she says that uh, the infected people uh, uh, variable uh, is difficult to be uh, to to be uh, uh, measured at the regional level because there have been a lot of infected people that have been redistributed to different regions. Uh, so uh, to avoid an overload in certain regions, and as we they did in in the in the Netherlands. So uh, for this region, she says that it's good to look both at the regional and national level because the the, the data are not there. Are you? Do you agree? Completely, I agree completely. Also, um, I think we have to be um, careful as well um, uh, of um, the provision of data and how we compare data from different countries as well. We have had this uh, this. Uh, I think the problem has been very evident, you know. And uh, still, I mean, uh, Germany, uh, German regions, uh, they don't appear in the in the regional uh, analysis I have presented. So this is why I was also keen to present the national one. So you have the national uh, weekly that's uh, for Germany, but you don't have the regional one. So I'm trying to, as I say at the very last slide, I'm trying to find ways to get information of uh, uh, of this important countries uh, for explaining the European evidence uh, that seem to be lacking at this moment. Hopefully, um, uh, I can find some sources to complement the, the, the sample. Okay, so there is another comment by David. Uh, He's very happy to, uh, to, uh, to that these data at the regional, at the urban level exist and they can uh, be happy to, to, to share. So another question is, how can you explain countries that have had a small number of deaths but do not belong to the rich countries that have achieved all the goals of sustainable development? For example, Greece. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's difficult, in particular when you are looking at, um, at the national level. I mean, um, because of course, uh, these countries, uh, they might also... Um, uh, contribute or not contribute very much uh, in explaining. So, I mean, the, for the first thing, uh, I think that looking only at uh, correlations, is, it, it can be also uh, misleading in some cases. So, uh, of course, the next step of the analysis when having a more comprehensive uh, kind of database at the regional level will be to implement some regression analysis and then therefore you will be able to, to, to understand much better uh, what is the effect of a particular country, right? Um, also, so we, um, I mean, I hope that uh, more releases of data will come soon. So then, um, uh, some of the provisions and estimations will be also uh, uh, more accurate. Because um, what we have seen is that those regions, uh, and also um, I, I wanted to add something. That is, when I was talking uh, at, at the very end of my presentation, that uh, in order to do not explain only negative things, that is how uh, you approximate the way of uh, the government to act by um, by only dealing with the deaths because the deaths sometimes uh, it can also be seen as a shock that is is a bit exogenous or is maybe not really necessarily connected with what is going on in the country. Just, um, uh, we have seen that very very important uh, regions in Europe have been affected and they look to be uh, regions very resilient. So um, I think that it will be very, very important to look at um, the positive effect of this, you know. So look at um, uh, the production or the consumption, or maybe even look at um, things such as uh, uh, how jobs have been uh, maintained because of the full law scheme or because of other schemes in other countries. Um, uh, so. Um, 
I think that it will be very interesting to look at um, uh, the, recu the recuperation or, or, or the way that they have recovered those uh, regions by, by approximating this. And also, I think that something that uh, probably I won't have time to do all these things, but I'm also calling to someone to look more in depth uh, to the tourism uh, regions. I think that um, uh, the regions that they are highly specialized in, in tourism, they have had a very particular uh, uh, effect of this pandemic, not only in terms of uh, um, um, uh, the normal effects that any other region might have had, but also the additional effects linked with regulations that they were completely exogenous to them, like uh, uh, the stop of the mobility of, uh, of people and, uh, and also uh, the closure uh, of uh, the leisure kind of uh, activities. So uh, they were all of them, of course, completely uh, against any uh, tourism activity. So those uh, regions, I think that they need and special attention. Thank you, uh, Rachel. Uh, so, uh, there are no further questions, as I see. Uh, so, I think we we are we can uh, close by end. I would like again to thank both speakers, the panelists, and also the attendees for the and the people that raised questions for this very interesting. Uh,